Hey crafters, it's Alex Vanover, and today I'm back in the 651 Vinyl Studio to introduce to you Armor Edge Cream. Now, Armor Edge Cream is not new, but we are now carrying it at 651 Vinyl, and I am so excited to show you guys how to use this stuff because I love etching. I've been etching for years, and I absolutely love this craft. So first of all, we have it in three different sizes, which is awesome. We have it in 22 ounces, 10 ounces, and almost three ounces, which means that no matter what your comfort level is with etching, we have the size for you. And the reason that I love to etch is because I think it makes a really, really elegant gift or a keepsake because it's totally dishwasher safe, oven safe, and pretty much everything safe once the um, stencil is etched into the glass. So you never have to be concerned with care instructions or the etch wearing out over time. So let's get started. So the first thing that we do before we weed our stencil is we're gonna clean off our glass with alcohol. I don't know if you guys are anything like me, but whenever I have glassware that I've bought to etch, it tends to be dusty and dirty from sitting in my craft room. So cleaning it off with rubbing alcohol and a cotton pad are the best way to remove any kind of dust or dirt that could get underneath our stencil and not give us a very clean etch. And this way, if we are able to clean off our glass before we begin our stencil, it'll give it a few minutes to dry before we have to apply it. So we'll set that aside and allow that to dry, and then we'll work on our stencil. So for your stencil, you can use any permanent adhesive vinyl that you'd like. I like to use StarCraft HD for mine, and the color obviously doesn't matter because it's just serving as a stencil, so the color of the vinyl is totally irrelevant. Another thing that I did before I cut this stencil is I moved it, I moved the cut in a little bit further on my mat so that there's a nice border around all of my edges. And the reason for that is because the vinyl is going to protect the etching cream from etching in areas that we don't want etched. So the more border that you have around your stencil, the easier that it is to protect your glass. However, you don't want an enormous border because if you do that, it will be very hard to get your vinyl to apply to your glass without wrinkling. So you kind of have to find a balance there of protection versus difficulty to work with. So when we cut out our stencil, or excuse me, when we weed our stencil, we're actually just going to weed the parts that you would normally keep. So I'm going to pull out the misses with my pin pen. And that is all that we're going to do to our stencil. And then we're going to add some transfer tape just like we would with any other vinyl decal. Then we're going to burnish with our stencil to make sure that we have great contact between our vinyl and our transfer tape. And before I put my vinyl on my glass, I'm going to cut a few slits around the outside of the stencil. And that's just going to allow my vinyl to contour to my surface a little bit easier and not wrinkle quite as much. The most important thing is to make sure that you're not getting wrinkles actually in your stencil. If you get wrinkles in your vinyl out this way, it's not as big of a deal, but you just wanna double check that you're not getting any around the stencil itself. Otherwise, the etching cream will leak underneath and not give you very clean lines. Then I'll use my pin pen to lift off my paper backing so that I'm just left with the vinyl and the transfer tape. And as you're pulling the backing off, just be careful not to um, let any of the centers of your letters come up on your backing. So you want to go nice and slow. And then when you're ready, it's time to place the decal onto your glassware. So my favorite way to do this is to hold my vinyl in a horseshoe shape like this. I put down the center first where I want it to go, and then I do one side and then the other. And it's hard to see when I do it on the actual glass, but that's the method that I follow to get as few bubbles and wrinkles as possible. So I'm going to center it the best that I can like this. I think I want to put my stencil up a little bit higher because in this area the glass starts to contour down toward the stem so I kind of want to put it on the little bit more flat part toward the top so I'm going to take it right here and you want to go nice and slow here that's going to prevent some wrinkles too just be nice and careful with your stencil So 
the first thing I do is kind of burnish it down with my finger to make sure that it's stuck in all the important areas. And then I'm gonna use my squeegee and I'm just gonna go over my vinyl and my transfer tape again. That is called burnishing. But that ensures that the vinyl is really well stuck on the surface and the squeegee allows me to get rid of a lot of wrinkles where I don't want them. But as I told you guys before, it's not as big of a deal if you have wrinkles out in your stencil. Um, you just wanna really make sure that around the actual areas that are gonna be etched, there are as few wrinkles and bumps as possible. And then it's time to remove your transfer tape. It's a little tricky to remove your transfer tape with your edges cut. Just make sure that you go nice and slow and take your time. Even if your transfer tape comes off in pieces, that's okay too. You'll notice that I'm pulling my transfer tape back at like a 180 degree angle. That also helps prevent bubbles because it doesn't put any stress on the vinyl as I'm removing my transfer tape. So now it's time to get etching. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put on gloves. I always like to use gloves when I'm using etching cream because etching cream is a chemical, so you always wanna make sure to take all the proper safety precautions. So we're gonna use the medium bottle today. I'm just gonna begin by using a popsicle stick to spread it all the way over my design. And you want to kind of find a little bit of a balance here. You don't want to lay it on super, super thick, but you do want to put a generous coat over the area that you're going to be etching. And you want to try to keep that as even as possible. You don't have to make it absolutely perfect, but you do want to keep it um, relatively even across the whole design if you can help it. So you can always go back and even it out some more. But you always will want to try to stay away from some of the slits that you made in the vinyl because that means that the um, etching cream can leak through your vinyl and create lines on your glass where you don't want them. So after you spread it over everything, I'm just going to go back and try to even it out a little bit so that my coat is as even as I can get it. Once you feel like your design is evenly and generously coated, set a timer for 15 minutes and simply let the etching cream do the work. So after you've waited 15 minutes, then you can remove your etching cream. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually scrape some of the etching cream and put it back into the jar. The really neat thing about etching is there's very, very little waste because you can put a lot of this cream back into the Armor Etch jar. Then some people like to rinse their etching cream off in the sink. I prefer to protect my sink and actually wipe mine off with a baby wipe. So that's why you'll notice I'm still wearing gloves because you always wanna make sure that you're wearing gloves the entire time that you're touching your etching cream. So I use a baby wipe prior to rinsing, like I said, to protect my sink, especially because the sink that I rinse things out in next to my craft room is porcelain. So you wanna be really careful not to put any harsh chemicals down the sink. So I just wipe it over like this Careful not to get any on the glass around the stencil still. And then I'm gonna remove the stencil using my pin pen. I love using etching cream because I think it makes really, really elegant gifts. And after glass is etched, it's totally dishwasher and oven safe. So it's super durable and it's a great gift to give on glassware and on some casserole dishes and things like that. I especially love making these for bridal showers and like new um, couples and brides-to-be. I think it's just a really, really sweet gift to give and it looks really, really thoughtful. Plus it's a lot more permanent than vinyl. So even though vinyl is wonderful, there's no care instructions or anything like that because you can take care of it however you'd like. Oops. <laughs> Sometimes after you're finished removing the stencil, you'll notice a little bit of blotchiness inside your etching. So I like to use a clean baby wipe and wipe it over one more time prior to washing it. And always make sure that you wash your glassware after you etch it before you give it as a gift, just to make sure that all of the chemicals are removed. Plus the baby wipe is probably gonna make the glass look a little bit blotchy. So after washing it with soap and water, all of that will go away. And after that, your etching is finished. 
Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried etching before. And if you have any questions about the etching process, make sure to drop those in the comments as well because you know that I'd be happy to answer them for you. And if you haven't already, please click right here to subscribe to the 651 Vinyl YouTube channel. Make sure that you ring the bell and select all notifications so that you never miss when we upload a new video. I'll see you guys in the next one.